You might notice in the description of all my YouTube videos, I say check out my Linux site. Um, I host it on jdoc.club, and it's what I call the Linux Masterclass. It really needs a new domain. Um, but it's, it's where I kind of share content in a non-video form. And I've been hosting this out of my uh, server for about a year, year and a half now. So it goes through my server on port 80, goes up to a reverse proxy on my network, um, goes out port 443, goes through my router, um, through Cloudflare, and then it gets served to the people. Um, but as of about two days ago, I transitioned that into a cloud-based solution. So I wanted to kind of talk about that and give you my thoughts behind it. So first off, bias. Um, I think this is really important when it is something that I am biased in. So I've been self-hosting for about over two years. I have about 10 years of Linux experience and that is bare metal. Um, and I'm a system admin first and developer second. Um, with that though, I am a cloud engineer. So I've been working as a cloud engineer for about a year now, about to go into my second career. Uh, our second position in my career as a cloud engineer. So I've uh, done primarily AWS. Um, I have an AZ900 certification and I'm about to go into GCP engineering. So I do have experience in the cloud. I'm very comfortable in it. Um, but hopefully, you know, this gives you kind of a holistic view of where I come from. So let's talk about cloud versus self-hosted, right? So cloud has no infrastructure. Um, it has OPEX, um, which is gonna be operational expenditure pretty much means instead of buying your servers every six months, every year, every two years, um, your operating expenditure, the amount of money you spend just to host it is what you're going to spend instead. So for a lot of simple websites that you might be running and that I'm running, it's actually going to be free. Um, and then you're going to get a Git repo and a domain name. Now with self-hosted, it gets a bit more complicated. So you're going to need the hardware, which is going to be your CapEx, your capital expenditure. So again, every how often you decide to upgrade your hardware, that's going to come directly out of your wallet. Um, you're, no one else is doing that for you. Uh, you have to have a host operating system. You have to host that operating system and leave it online 24 seven too. Um, and then you have to have a bunch of applications here. So you're probably gonna need some kind of Nginx, uncomplicated firewall, maybe Python, like Flask or Django, Hugo, Node, Apache. You're going to need to learn how to use those applications. Um, on top of that, if you want to have HTTPS, which in 2021, 2022 now, um, you should have HTTPS on your site, and that's going to require an SSL certificate. Even if it's um, not important information, even if you're not collecting any user data, um, consumers want to see HTTPS. So that's really important that you have that, and that is a complicated process to get online. Uh, and then again, you're also going to need a domain name, and then you're going to need a moderate level of system administrator experience just to configure your Nginx properly, especially if you want to put a reverse proxy in or anything like that. Um, it, it does take a level of uh, experience to know what you're doing and how to properly do it. You can learn it all in a weekend if you want to, but it does take time. So moving forward, um, why am I doing this right? So we've got the state of jdog.club. Um, it has really slow load times. I've had people complain about it before. Um, it has imperfect uptime. I do not have the best ISP. So sometimes my internet goes out for six, eight hours. Uh, it's not common, but it does occur. Um, and then it has frequent DDoS attacks. So I usually see about two to five a month. Um, and that's something that, you know, mitigation has to be done by me, or I can, you know, put something in front of my website. I have been putting Cloudflare in front of my website for about eight months now, which does help out. Um, but the trigger for all this is going to be two weeks of downtime. So if you, if you can't see behind me, I've got a bunch of boxes. I don't have a bed anymore. Um, I'm moving and due to just logistics and timing and everything, it's going to be about two weeks before any of my servers are back online. So I recently hit first page of Google. I'm really happy with that. I think it's really cool. Um, and I really do like hosting this content. So I didn't, I didn't want it to go down for two weeks because I think that would destroy the website. So I went to the cloud. So let's talk about the upsides of the cloud. And I did get this from Code Academy. Um, just kind of give you where my sources are coming from, but you have scalability. So as your usage increases, um, so does the servers and hardware you have. Um, cost, again, you don't need to buy your own infrastructure. Um, speed, um, this is primarily in developer speed. So it's faster to um, get everything online and productive productivity kind of falls under that too. So it's just faster to test your code and then deploy it in comparison to uh, on-prem. And on-prem would be on-premises or like self-hosted. Um, performance, so that's going to be actually the speed of how fast you have load times and how quickly someone can go to your website and the content actually loads. 
then you have security and disaster recovery, which is a bit more self-explanatory you know, if a tornado hits my house, um, disaster recovery is going to be kind of harsh. Um, and then security again with like DDoS attacks and things like that. So let's look at the ones that benefited me. And you're going to notice I took off scalability, cost, and speed. So for me, um, it does not take much time for me to test and deploy my site. So speed, not really an issue. Cost, I already own the hardware, right? So um, I might be saving a little bit on my power bill, but I'm leaving the server online anyways for other stuff. So that's not really a benefit to me either. And then scalability, um, it's a static website that I run. I really like to run static websites um, that use JavaScript to kind of handle everything. So scalability is not really going to be important to me because it'd be really hard to um, flesh out that load, right? So um, the benefits for me are productivity though. So um, pretty much everything you self ho or host in the cloud is gonna require some kind of like Git repo, uh, whether using GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, uh, what have you. So I happen to use GitLab and GitHub already. So productivity wise, that is a huge benefit. As soon as I push a change, it gets pushed to the website. Uh, performance, again, my server is just going to be closer to um, where people are actually accessing my website, and it's not relying on a bunch more um, different routes it has to travel from my network to my ISP to Cloudflare to them. Um, security and disaster recovery, again, I think um, security, primarily DDoS attacks, those are really annoying. Um, then disaster recovery, hopefully that never happens to me, but um, it could. You could even look at me moving as like a quote unquote disaster, even if it's not, you know, an act of God. Um, there's going to be two weeks of downtime for me. So that was a big reason I chose it. But um, so that's the upsides. And that's the reason that I chose to do it. Let's look at the downsides. So again, this is from Code Academy. Um, downtime is one uh, security and privacy, vulnerability to attack, limited control, vendor lock in, and cost concerns. So starting from bottom up. Cost concerns, um, for me, that's not a big deal um, currently because I am doing free. And if the cloud service that I'm getting offered isn't free, I'm happy to go back to self-hosted. Uh, vendor lock-in is something I really do concern about at my work a lot um, because if you design a solution around a certain cloud provider, that could really bite you later in life, um, especially if they decide to increase their costs for no good reason, then you're kind of stuck with it. For me, it's not a big deal because again, a git repo and almost every single cloud uh, provider is going to take a git repo and it's a very simple configuration i don't have to put any jenkins or anything behind it uh, limited control so you do have less control um, in comparison to you know having your own server where you can you know sudo into and do whatever you'd like uh, for a web server i don't see that as a big uh, downside vulnerability to attack if anything actually it's making it better for me because i'm taking that risk of my home network and putting it somewhere else into someone else's hands to deal with, right? Um, security and privacy. Um, privacy, I do think is a really big one. This is a public Git repo though, and I design it that way so people can see the source code. So it's not a concern for me. And then downtime, again, I have a really terrible ISP. So uh, the 99 point whatever uh, down uh, uptime is going to be better than what I probably could have provided myself. And then looking at why I chose it, again, Downtime, again, for me, is a benefit. Security and privacy, it's a public Git repo, doesn't really affect me. Vendor lock-in, it's a Git repo, doesn't really affect me. So again, cost concerns are a big one. Um, if this does ever cost me money, I'm happy to go back to self-hosted. Um, limited control, um, it could affect me. Um, all in all, uh, it is just a simple static website, so I'm not too concerned there. And then vulnerability to attack, again, I think that's a benefit because it's taking the risk and mitigating it from my network to someone else's. So um, I kind of want to close out with this before I kind of show you how I configured everything, but I wanted to ask, should you move to the cloud? And a lot of people are going to say, well, it depends and it does depend, but I can kind of give you a bit better answers. So for a system admin, I say no. Um, it is increased experience. You get more hands-on um, building a server, putting an operating system on it. Uh, pulling your code in, uh, putting it into the proper directories, configuring your applications, managing config files, I think that's really beneficial. And I think it's really easy to take all of those skills, take them from on-prem or self-hosted, and then move them to the cloud. The cloud is designed to be super simple. And if you know how to do this stuff um, on your own hardware, it's a lot easier to do it in the cloud. Um, as a developer, I think the cloud's actually a really great option. Um, this isn't primarily for personal projects. 
Um, but there is a benefit to doing it there. So I think learning development is more important. There's so many functions in computers that you don't need to know how to do everything, especially as a developer. It's if you can develop and write good applications and code, you're doing great. But the cloud is everywhere. It's a great skill to have as a developer. And then a big thing for me is if I ever decide to um, start a startup or something like that, I'm going straight to the cloud. So I have my issues with the cloud, but scalability and elasticity is really important to me. So being able to have my virtual machines or my Docker containers or my Kubernetes cluster scale up and down depending on workload is really important because as my workload increases, so does the amount of money I'm making in theory. So I'm willing to you know, take on that additional cost um, instead of having to worry about making sure my servers aren't gonna blow up. So I think as a developer, it makes a lot of sense to move to the cloud, but as a system admin, um, I think it really does make sense to try to figure it out um, on your self-hosted device. If you do wanna do something like become a cloud engineer, like what I do, I think it does make sense to know both. And again, I think if you know how to do it, on your own hardware moving to the cloud is much easier. There's gonna be some different configurations and stuff, but overall I'd say if you're a system admin, do it on hardware. So after that, I do kind of want to show the configuration I have for some things here, right? So I did clear out anything that, you know, I didn't want you guys to see, I'm just editing the HTML, but um, this is the application here, so you can see it's built off of this. So we can open the link and see the Git repo. I don't have anything custom in here. This GitLab CIYML actually doesn't really do anything. It was kind of a test file I built, um, and it didn't quite do what I wanted it to. So don't have to worry about that. Um, but yeah, so all it does is I pretty much inputted this. It knew what static site generator I was using just based on the configuration files, and it built it for me, which was really awesome. I'm using Cloudflare to do this just because a lot of my stack is currently running in Cloudflare, so it makes my life a bit easier. Um, and then here, um, again, you can see deployments and custom domains and the settings I have set and everything, and all the variables. Um, and then, so this is the DNS. So you can see almost everything I have is A records here, and I did clear out the information. Um, but those are actually coming directly from my IP address. They're coming from my server, right, in my house, where all you have to do with the DNS record is to set up a C name, point it to your domain, um, as well as maybe some, this has flattening built in, which means it also does, you know, the www. Um, and then that's gonna be the site. So if you go to linuxmasterclass.pages.dev, you're gonna see it loads my website. And if we go to jdoc.club, because of the C name, it's gonna load the exact same content. So for me, um, I couldn't risk the downtime, and I think it's really important that I provide this content and serve it for people. And there is some benefits just in speed, especially, um, with me doing it this way. So that is why I moved to the cloud. Um, I definitely still have a ton of services on my network, and I think it's great to have both skills. Um, and hopefully that kind of gives you a better idea as to why or why not you might want to move to the cloud. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Hope you learned something.